Rate limit errors like this will ruin your AI application. OpenAI has their own rate limits, and Throbic has their own rate limits, and they work a little differently. Luckily for you, I'm going to explain how all of this works. I've got an OpenAI demo in Python and an Anthropic demo in Python. By the end of this video, you'll understand exactly how these errors work. And you'll even get a few tips on how to avoid them. My name is Tommy from Tommy Codes. Let's go. I've already lamented the fact that AI is not free. You have to pay for API usage. You have to pay for ChatGPT Pro and Plus and all of these cool features. But not only is it not free, we have to share it. There's mandatory sharing implemented via rate limits. All of the major providers do this. OpenAI, Anthropic, Google, all of them are going to have rate limits. And rate limits essentially limit the amount of text you can send per minute to a particular model. And the reason that they need these, by the way, is that it's very expensive to run inference on these models. Specifically, these companies need to buy or rent large numbers of GPUs, and GPUs are hard to come by and expensive these days. And because of that, there are rate limits. Here we have some rate limit numbers from OpenAI. This is tier two, and I'm gonna explain what the tiers are in a minute. Take note of the fact that the rate limits are distinct per model, and GPT-40's rate limit is significantly lower than GPT-40 Mini. This is because GPT-40 Mini is dumber, faster, and cheaper, because it does not need as many GPUs to run as GPT-40, and that's reflected in the tokens per minute. We talked about tokens in a previous video, but just to refresh your memory a little bit, the amount of tokens in the book Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, according to ChatGPT itself, is around 100,000. Around 100,000 tokens in this Harry Potter book. And with this rate limit here of 450,000 on GPT-40, you'd be able to read, or rather have GPT-40 read this novel four and a half times per minute. You could ask it questions, have it summarized, whatever you want to do, you can do that four and a half times per minute with Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone if you were on tier two. Requests per minute are deducted anytime you make an API request. So if you're making a lot of API requests that don't use very many tokens, maybe you'll hit this, but to be honest, the tokens per minute is probably what you're gonna hit. I mentioned that this sharing is mandatory. Everybody has to play nice and it has to be equal. Well, it's not really equal because if you're paying them more money, they're gonna give you a higher rate limit. Tier five is the highest advertised rate limit. And honestly, it's not even that much. You basically pay them $1,000 like ever, and you get access to 150 million tokens per minute on GPT-40 Mini. This sounds like a lot, but you'd be surprised how easy it is to hit this limit, especially if you're building any kind of application that's combing through large amounts of documents or other pieces of text. This is a lot easier to hit than you'd think. I'd also like to point out that if you're on something like tier two, it's kind of difficult to make like a really serious application, especially if it has a lot of users. You're almost if this is going to be the backbone of your app, API calls to OpenAI, you're almost certainly going to have to go to tier five. And I said advertised tier because if you look at OpenAI's API revenue, it's in the billions, I believe already. And I bet there's customers that are paying maybe seven figures or more per month. And yeah, if you're paying seven figures or more per month to OpenAI, there definitely are some kickbacks and I'm sure they would be able to increase this, add a zero to this limit if you're paying them a million dollars a month. But I don't know for sure. I don't, I don't have firsthand experience with that, but that's my gut is telling me that if you're paying a thousand dollars and you're paying a million dollars per month, the million dollars per month is gonna get treated a little bit better. Let's take a look at Anthropic. Anthropic has a very similar system. They, they didn't used to have the tiers, but take note that the Anthropic tiers well, one, for all of them, they, they, they break it down by input and output token. I don't really know why they do this. I don't think it really makes that much of a difference, to be honest. But regardless, they, they, they're more precise with the tokens, whereas OpenAI is just using tokens. I assume they combine the input and the output tokens. Tier four for Anthropic is kind of bad, 400,000 tokens per minute. So the tokens are different between OpenAI and Anthropic. They're not really one-to-one, -one, but even in the highest advertised tier, you're only getting four full reads of Harry Potter per minute, which is not enough for any Harry Potter app I'd want to build. Let's actually see, what is the credit purchase? So I guess only $400 need to be spent with the API to go to tier four. And then you'll notice there's a monthly invoicing. So yeah, that's the custom. This is where you're just paying them a lot of money and then this becomes negotiable. So you have some representative, you talk to them and if you're spending a lot of money and you've got a lot of leverage, I'm sure you could get several zeros added to this if you want. All right, we got two demos today for you guys. One's gonna be with OpenAI and one's gonna be with Anthropic. They're gonna be very similar, but let's start with OpenAI here. And we're gonna just run a chat completion for GPT-40. If you watch the video on 
bell and pricing, you'll recognize the prompt. We just want a story about a man who's lost at sea. Don't want it to be more than 50 words. And we're gonna print out the response here. And so we can see what the LM generated. A drift for days, Tom clung to the overturned hull. I did not tell it to use Tom, my name by the way, but it just happened to. And then I'm having it print out this JSON that I extracted. And this JSON is the rate limit information. And if we take a look here, we have information about requests and information about tokens. The rate limits, there's two distinct rate limits per model. One is tokens per minute and one is requests per minute. And we can read the output of this as follows. My current plan for GPT-40 allows me 10,000 API requests per minute. So I can make 10,000 different API requests per minute per GPT-40, for GPT-40. For tokens, looks like I get, that would be 2 million tokens per minute. I get up to 2 million tokens per minute. The reset, this is OpenAI telling us how long we need to wait until the limit is completely refreshed. So if I were to wait six milliseconds, my request remaining would go back up to 10,000. And if I were to wait one millisecond, my tokens remaining would go back up to 2 million. This is what you need to collect and use in order to manage and monitor your rate limit usage. You need to know when you're getting close or when you're hitting the rate limit for a number of reasons. If your app is you know, going through a large amount of text and that's a core value proposition, and you're hitting these rate limits all the time, the user experience is gonna be terrible, it's gonna tank. Especially if you're doing this not in the background, not processing data overnight, but rather doing something while the user's just sitting there waiting for a response. So you really wanna make sure you're managing this properly. Let's go over to Anthropic and we're gonna run basically the exact same code and we're gonna use um, 3.5 Haiku. Uh, I did not mean to set a breakpoint there, but anyways, we get on here, the output for Anthropic is very similar, but it's a few distinctions. First of all, the reset time for Anthropic, it's not telling us how long we have to wait. So if you remember with OpenAI, it said six milliseconds until the request remaining goes back to its full value. Here, it's telling us the time that we wait until. So that's a little different. So this says, hey, just wait until midnight 55 UTC time and your request remaining will go back to 50. Interestingly, Anthropic also breaks up the input and the output tokens separately. I'm pretty sure this is a new development. I don't know that this was how it was done before, but regardless, this is the output that you can see here. This information, by the way, actually comes in the headers, the headers and the API response. So the, the token usage is present in the chat completion API response in a thing called the usage, but the rate limit information is not in the API response directly. It's in the response headers. And to be honest, it's kind of a pain in the ass to parse it out, but I've got the code here for you to do this. It is unfortunately not the same between OpenAI and Anthropic. The headers are slightly different. So here's the Anthropic headers. If we go to OpenAI, we can see that it's similar, but it's different. Here's the OpenAI headers. Now we know what the rate limit is, why it exists. We know that it's different per model. We know that there's different tiers. We've seen it in the code. We know how to monitor it and measure it. But what do you actually do when you start hitting the rate limit? OpenAI has this section of their API docs called error mitigation, and it describes in detail what you should do if you hit the rate limit. I'm gonna save you guys some time, and I'm also gonna disappoint you here. You basically can't do anything. Your best bet is to, to retry, wait a bit, go get a coffee, or email your OpenAI representative and complain at them to increase the limit, maybe spend some more money, swipe your credit card, et cetera, et cetera. There's really not a lot you can do immediately other than just start processing less text one thing I will say is you definitely don't want to use GPT-40 or the smarter models if, unless you absolutely need to. If you can get away with GPT-40 Mini or Claude 3.5 Haiku, you're better off doing that because one, it's way cheaper and two, the rate limits are much more generous. That's kind of the main recommendation. The other thing is restructure your app so that you don't have to send as many completions, so that you don't have to send as much text. When I mentioned the document example, if you're combing through you know, hundreds of thousands of documents, Make sure that you're not, you know, resending the same prompts over and over again, unless you absolutely need to or want to. Basic stuff like that. There's no magic bullets. That is, honestly, you could probably just wait a few years. I think the GPUs are going to get a lot better. Inference costs are going to go down. And hopefully in five years, we forget about this rate limit nightmare and it never happens again. And we don't even have to share any of this crap again. But I cannot guarantee that for you guys. So in the meantime, I'd recommend using the smaller models if possible, getting your, your rate limit up, 
negotiating, spending more money, emailing the representatives, complaining, whatever you got to do, because when it's higher, it's better. Believe me, if you're on tier one, you are screwed. You really are not going to build, you're not going to be able to build like a very serious app. You really need to be on the highest tiers if you're building a serious app. And ideally you can even get some more leverage depending on what you're doing. Anyway, that's enough rate limit talk for today. Thank you for watching the video. If you made it this far, please make sure to subscribe. We are on the road to 1 million subscribers. First hump to hit is 100. Would really appreciate if you could do that. And check out some of my other videos in the links.